Hey, how you doing? If you've watched true crime content and darker content in general for any real length of time, then you know there are cases that stick with you. Cases you find yourself thinking about when you're just doing the dishes or taking a shower. Cases that haunt you. Well, today we're going to talk about one of those cases for me. For whatever reason, this particular case has stuck with me in the back of my mind. In other words, it's haunted me. Which is somewhat ironic, because this case actually deals with a potential haunting. Now, just a couple quick notes before we begin. As always, I will be utilizing active missing people posters for the visuals of this video. These don't have anything at all to do with the case I'll be discussing, but if you've seen any of my previous videos, then you'll know that it's my mission to get as many eyes as I possibly can on these. So. So, if you have information on any of the missing people shown here, please contact the details provided. And who knows, maybe together we can help bring someone home one day. Secondly, this case does contain many gruesome and disturbing details, so viewer discretion is advised. Three, two, one! In the year 1994, Christine Skubish was a 33-year-old mother living with her toddler son Nick in Sacramento, California. Christine's life was currently on an upswing. She had recently just earned her paralegal certification and was just about to embark on an exciting and challenging new career. And it wasn't just her work life that was looking up either. She had recently become engaged to Nick's biological father. However, despite all of these blessings, she had no way of knowing what was coming. At midnight on June 5th, 1994, Christine and Nick left upon a fateful journey that would change both of their lives forever. And so, they set off into the night, heading down Highway 50 through the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Their destination was Carson City, Nevada, which was around a three-hour journey from from their home. Christine was on her way there in order to spend a few days visiting with a close friend. Unfortunately, however, Christine and Nick never made it there. They vanished somewhere between their home and Carson City. On June 8th, Dave, Christine's stepfather, received a call from the friend that Christine was supposed to be visiting with. This friend explained to Dave that Christine and Nick were supposed to arrive in Carson City by Monday, but now it was Wednesday and no one had seen or heard from them. So together, they phoned all of the nearby hospitals, but to no avail. Neither Christine nor her young son had been admitted to any of them. Naturally, Dave assumed that the pair had crashed their car somewhere between Sacramento and Carson City. At this point, Dave decided to involve the authorities and report the two as missing. If they were going to find Christine and Nick still alive, then time was of the utmost importance. For the weather in that season consisted of blisteringly hot days and frigidly cold nights. So, the two wouldn't last long if they were exposed to the elements for any great length of time. Up and down, back and forth, deputies scoured every inch of the highway that they knew Christine would have taken on her way to Carson City. But unfortunately, there was no sign of her vehicle and no trace of a possible crash. For two full days, investigators searched aimlessly until finally they received a tip. This tip was called in by a woman named Deborah Hoyt. You see, on Friday, the same night that Christine and Nick disappeared, Deborah and her husband had been driving along Highway 50 when they noticed something horrific laying on the side of the road the nude body of a deceased woman. The body was positioned on its side, with her blank stare facing the roadway. The woman appeared to be covered in blood, and bizarrely, she was completely nude. A more startlingly scary sight I could not imagine. Deborah and her husband were understandably suspicious that this could be some sort of trap or setup. 
and so they didn't stop to investigate any further. Instead, they continued driving until they reached a payphone and contacted the authorities. Two officers were then dispatched to where Deborah stated that she had seen the dead woman, which was a stretch of road called Bully and Bend. After arriving, however, to the officer's complete bewilderment, they found no woman at all either alive or dead. The following morning, the Skubish family caught wind of this strange report to the police and immediately thought of Christine. The family then begged the authorities to return to that bit of highway and investigate further. So, the detectives agreed to conduct a much more thorough search now that they had the advantage of daylight to aid them. After all, this was a mother and her very young son who were missing. Soon after after arriving at Highway Post 16, an officer found a startling and quite ominous clue. The discarded shoe of a young boy laying on the side of the road. Following his natural instincts, the officer looked over the ledge and railing to the very bottom of the steep ravine. And there, hidden deep within the brush, was Christine Skubish's wrecked vehicle. Missing its entire upper half, the car was in quite bad shape. It was obvious to the officer that Christine must have hit the embankment traveling at a great speed. Strangely, there were no tire marks leading up to the ledge. It was as though she had hit it full throttle, with no sign whatsoever of braking. Immediately, the officer raced to the bottom of the ravine in order to reach the vehicle, but nothing could have prepared him for what he saw when he looked inside. Christine Skubish's lifeless body was hanging in the driver's seat, still securely buckled up. The officer then spotted Nick himself, curled up in the fetal position on the passenger seat. The young boy lay completely still, and his skin was tinged with the bluish hue. Assuming the boy was already dead, the officer reached out to feel for a pulse to confirm, and as he did so, Nick took a shallow breath. Somehow, the toddler was still clinging to life. Immediately, the officer radioed for medical assistance and Nick was rushed to the nearest hospital. As doctors raced to save Nick's life, investigators began trying to piece together what exactly happened. And it wasn't very long before they came up with a theory. The investigators reasoned that sometime on June 6th, after 2 a.m., Christine must have fallen asleep at the wheel. And so, for five long days, her vehicle lay hidden in the ravine, unseen by any passing motorist. Nick's little shoe must have flown out the window as they crashed. Astoundingly, the toddler survived his horrific ordeal. He was incredibly lucky. Just a few more hours in that car and he would not have lived. And it all comes back around to Deborah Hoyt. If she had never called in that tip about the dead woman on the side of the road, then Nick never would have been found. And right therein lies the great mystery of this case. Who was the woman that Deborah saw that night? After all, Christine's body was found still buckled up in her car at the bottom of the ravine. The coroner later confirmed that she had died instantly upon impact. And so, it obviously would have been impossible for her to have ever left the vehicle. Could it be that Christine loved her young son so much that she returned from the dead in order to save him? Some people certainly think so. Could her spirit have really made it up that ravine and somehow signaled for help? It's possible, but there are some more down-to-earth explanations out there. Some people think that the whole thing might have just been a bizarre prank. That for some reason, a woman just covered herself in fake blood and laid down on the side of the road to get a laugh. And somehow, she just happened to pick the exact spot where Christine and Nick had wrecked. Personally, I feel that this theory is pretty far-fetched. After all, that would have to be one hell of a coincidence. Another theory is that Deborah Hoyt had accidentally run Christine off the road herself. And then, five days later, her conscience got the better of her, and so she called the authorities and made up a bizarre story. 
I also don't believe that this one is very likely. The most realistic theory to me is that Deborah didn't see a dead woman on the side of the road at all. What she actually saw that night was Nick himself. Warm from the afternoon sun, this theory states that Nick took off his own clothes and climbed to the top of the ravine, where Deborah then saw him and mistook him for a grown woman. I'm not really sure how likely this theory is either. Could a three-year-old really have made it all the way up the side of that ravine to the roadway and then back down to the vehicle again? We'll probably never know for sure what actually occurred that night. However, there is one more interesting detail to take note of. Nick himself would later recall that each and every night that he was trapped in the vehicle, he had seen the hazy outline of a woman watching over him from the roadside. Could this have been Christine herself, still watching over her young son? Or is it just wishful thinking on Nick's part? I think it's pretty safe to say that we'll never know for sure. At least until we take that final trip ourselves. Thanks for watching everybody. Hey, if you liked that video, then please like and subscribe. It really does help. And for more dark content, stay tuned to Cancel Happiness.